My name is Mr. Pendergrass, and I am the elementary instrumental music teacher at Fairmount Park School here in Seattle. I'm recording this lesson to you from my home. I'm sure you're at home too. Seems like we've been stuck here for a while. But you know, I'm trying to use this time wisely and practice my instruments that I use to teach a lot of my students. And this is a good time for you to practice too. When you've got nothing but time, put it to good use so you can become a better trumpet player. In this lesson, we're going to talk about this part of our face. Some people call it the embouchure. It's a fancy word, and we're going to talk about what that means. We're going to talk about how to use your embouchure to play some low notes on the trumpet. Sometimes low notes can be tricky on the trumpet. We'll talk about how you can make them sound clear. And then we're going to play a song that is a round. It's a type of form where you start and play. Well, you know what? We'll get to that in the lesson. Take a moment now to gather all the materials that you'll need for this lesson. Okay, now that you have your things, I want to talk to you about a word that I use that helps me think about practicing. You know, sometimes I can waste time practicing if I don't have some goals in mind. So even after this lesson, when you're doing new things, I want you to use this word that you're gonna see up there to help you think about practicing. The word is brass. That's the metal that our trumpet is made out of. The first B talks about buzz and breath. We're gonna spend some time on that today. R stands for repetition and rest. Play your songs and exercise as many times, but make sure you give yourself rest. A stands for articulation and agility. S stands for sing it. And the final S in brass stands for share it. This is just a word that you can write down and use as a checklist when you're practicing at home to make sure you cover all these key concepts. Today we're gonna to go through most of those concepts Sometimes I'll tell you when we're going to do it. Sometimes you'll figure it out on your own. Buzz and breath. Think of your breath having warm air. Where does that come from? Well, it's the type of breath you would take to maybe fog up a mirror or a piece of glass. Put your hand up to your face. Take a breath. And that should feel nice and warm. That's the warm air we want. So with that warm air, buzz just in your mouthpiece. Try a high buzz. Pull the corners of your lips back and let's do a low buzz. Notice the shape of my face. Let's do some buzzes up and down. And then let's buzz a song, maybe Twinkle Twinkle. You take some time to do some buzzing warm-ups on your own. Let's talk about that big word I mentioned at the beginning, embouchure. An embouchure is how you hold your face when you play the trumpet. We're going to be playing some low notes today and I want to show you what I do when I play low notes. I like to point my chin to the ground so that my lips are loose but not so loose they're out of control. So I'm going to start with a high one with my lips kind of tight. See how I pull the corners back? Now I'm going to go from a high one to a low and I want you to watch my chin. might be hard to notice, but I point my chin to the floor. That makes my embouchure make those low notes come out a lot clearer. If we can point our chins and really concentrate on blowing warm, fast air, you're going to be able to make low notes sound really great in the trumpet. All right, we're going to begin with a song that uses a pretty low note on the trumpet. It's called Mark Time, and it's in our band method book. You can see it up there. And we're going to look at that note B that's below the staff, and it's only second valve. This is second valve. It's the one in the middle. And remember, your valves are one, two, 
three. One is closest to your face. And I really like to point my chin to the ground when I play that B, which should sound like this. Also, did you notice that I pressed the valve first and then I blew? Don't press and blow at the same time. If you have a note that starts with a valve that needs to be pressed or a combination of valves, press the valves first and then blow. My chin is really pointing to the floor. I've got that warm, fast air. Also, I want you to notice in this song, in the fourth measure, there's two tied notes. A tie is a line that combines two pitches together and you play them in one unbroken pitch. So you're going to play both of those C's for a total of three counts because the half note gets two counts and a quarter note gets one count, so two plus one is three. Let's play this song together. One, two, three, four. Take some time to practice that on your own. Remember that warm, fast air that comes from down here and point your chin to the ground so you can really make those bees sound nice and clear. Okay, we're going to look at another song in our band book that uses that low B. And it's called Sweetly Sings the Donkey. And you'll notice after the title it says round. And a round is a type of form that we'll talk about in just a minute. So I'm going to play it through once. You can play along with me if you like. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> You know, when you play that C at the end, you can point your chin down to make it happen. Let's play it one more time. One, two, three, four. <laughs> talk about how a round works. You may have sung a round before in your classroom or in a choir. One of the most famous rounds that I learned when I was a kid was row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. So one person would start or one group of people. Then when the first group got to a certain spot in the song, the next group would start at the beginning of the song while the second group would keep going. So Sweetly Sings the Donkey is a round. And you'll notice there's numbers above certain measures in the music. These are not measure numbers. These are round numbers to tell you how many parts are in this round. And this round has two parts. I want to show you a video I made of myself playing this round so you can see how it works. You're going to see me start playing first. Then the screen's going to split. And I'm going to come in again playing the beginning of the round while my other recorded self keeps playing 
where they started. Watch this video and then we'll come back and try it together. So did you see how that worked? So I'm going to start playing Sweetly Sings the Donkey Round. And when I get to number two in the song, you start playing. And make sure you're keeping track of my beat. I should hopefully be playing with a steady beat so that when you come in at number one, we'll be together but playing different parts. Okay? So let's try it. One, two, three. Four. So if you did it right, you would be obviously playing first with me and then all by yourself. Make sense? So don't come in until I get to number two. We're going to try it again, okay? In fact, I don't even need to count off because you're just going to listen for me and come in at number two. you enjoyed doing that. Thank you for participating in this lesson today. I hope you had some fun. You know, you could do a round on your own. You could record yourself playing it, then play the recording, and when you get to that spot in the music where you're supposed to start, play along with yourself. It's really fun to do. You can do this with duets, maybe with a friend who could send you their recording. And you know, that has me thinking, a lot of my students are really disappointed that we're not going to have our concerts this year, at least in person. So we've been coming up with some ideas maybe where we could record ourselves and do some type of virtual concert. I really encourage you to do that. Maybe check with your instrumental music teacher. I know I love it when my kids play and send me their recordings. It tells me one, they're practicing, and two, I really miss hearing them play. I know a lot of families make music and they never get a chance to share it with the world. Here's your chance. Find some times to get together with your family and make music. You've got your trumpet. You probably have some other instruments at home. Be creative. Make up some songs. This is the time when we need to make music in our lives because making music makes us happy. So keep practicing your trumpet and I hope to see you again.